Howdy, 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 and welcome to WWW. What a week in wrestling. News, reviews, look forward to pay-per-view, extreme rules this time, and a collector's corner. Very figure-heavy again for the second week in a row, collector's corner. Let's kick straight off with the news and the ratings battle on a Wednesday. Obviously, both shows having kind of minor weekly pay-per-views this week. Um, AEW was beaten by NXT in the overall ratings, but AEW won the key demographic. So the keeps being victories for both sides at the moment with no clear victor going forward. Um, we'll see where that goes once the programs evolve. Um, the FTW belt is now in at AEW. Uh, I don't know whether they'll actually use it as a proper belt. Um, I, I very much doubt it, to be honest. AEW seems to love the three letters at the moment. TNT, FTW, FTR, AEW, SCU. Just loads of them at the moment. Um, must, must roll off the tongue well for some of the producers, I take it. Uh, Rey Mysterio, very interesting, that's been reported this week that he may be working without a contract at the moment. Now, Rey Mysterio is very clearly a WWE guy. He's not going to do anything to upset them. He'll, he'll make way too much in merchandise and he's got a limited schedule when he wants it. But it does lead to a fan getting a little bit excited and thinking, what if? You think back to your kind of Lex Lugers were one week on Raw, next week uh, on Nitro, your Rick Rudes when he turned up, uh, to, a, to a less extent, to a much further extent, your Nashes and your Diesel turning up. It gives you that little bit of excitement, that little bit of hope that, wow, that's not happened for years, could happen again. Um, WWE, I've heard a little reports of them getting a bit slack on contracts at the moment. So we'll see if that happens again. I'm, I'm excited if it does. Um, the attendance issue at the moment is all up in the air. AEW, it's been reported, is kind of thinking about maybe getting fans back in the stadiums. I believe some NFL type games or some kind of American sport games uh, have been allowed to start again in a few months with a 25% attendance. So scattered people in the crowd, basically. Uh, it'll be really good if that happens um, because the crowd for the kind of lesser wrestlers, the jobber wrestlers, they're good, but they don't have the same feel at all of a crowd. And obviously they're very management led. So you want to see how the crowd really reacts to these wrestlers. And there's been a few moments in recent history where a crowd would have been amazing during the matches. Uh, WWE Network has a uh, focus on Ricochet this week, uh, 365. 365 is a great documentary series. If you haven't seen any of them, make sure you get on that. Ricochet, he, he came off as such a nice chap. Uh, it documented his kind of rise to the point where he faced Brock Lesnar at the Saudi Arabia show to kind of his more recent kind of demise and his longing to kind of get back up there. He seems like a nice chap. That could be his downfall. Maybe he's going to be a bit too nice. Doesn't speak out as much as he could. Um, let's go on to the results. Monday Night Raw was very kind of tag heavy this week. Started off with a great segment with Drew McIntyre and Heath Slater. Heath Slater gave a cracking promo. Uh, well done, Heath. And then Drew just beat him with a claymore. Uh, Kairi Sane defeated Sasha Banks. Uh, great to see Kairi Sane back on the roster. There's a lot of reports that she's not going to be here for very long. So while she's here, great for her to have some matches. Uh, Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens defeated Murphy and Seth Rollins. MVP and Lashley continued their really good streak as they defeated Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Randy Orton teamed with Andrade and Angel Garza, the probable new tag team champion soon, as they defeated the Viking Raiders and the Big Show. Billy Kay defeated Ruby Riot. A couple of notes from that one. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing with the Iconics because they seem to be popping up on Raw and getting good victories and then losing on main events, um, which I'm assuming signals a kind of rise for Bianca Belair, who's been winning on main event quite a lot. Uh, Ruby Riot, the second point. <clears throat> I'm looking to a Liv Morgan coming in with her 
getting the kind of uh, two thirds of the riot squad started again. Uh, and I, I assume they'll fight for the tag team titles uh, quite soonish, if not later in the year. Uh, and the final match of Raw is Asuka defeating Bailey to set up the Asuka Sasha Banks match at Extreme Rules. Uh, NXT Great American Bash Part 2. Uh, started off with a women's match, Candice LeRae versus Mia Yim. Uh, I think it was, I believe it was a street fight. Um, it was a good match, actually. Lots of spots, lots of good things involved. Nice little story told. Candice LeRae coming out with the victory. Uh, we had a kind of B-level match next as uh, Bronson Reed defeated Tony Nice. Good to see Bronson Reed getting a victory. Maybe he'll start getting a few like the kind of Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis type of thing. Uh, Johnny Gargano in another B match defeated Isaiah Swerve Scott. Uh, lots of spots in that match again. Lots of showcases of what, what Isaiah Scott can do really as a great wrestler. Look forward to seeing him getting a push. Legado Del Fantasma defeated Breezango and Drake Maverick. Mercedes Martinez made her debut and defeated Santana Garrett. Uh, she let Santana Garrett get a decent amount of offense in there, um, but came across still dominating, which is exactly what you need from a debut match. Didn't make Santana Garrett look really weak, but kept herself looking very strong. Uh, Mercedes Martinez is a very big talent. She doesn't have a great deal left in her career, I would say, compared to a lot of other wrestlers on the roster. So it'd be really nice to see her getting a massive push. Comes across as kind of a, like a Shayna Baszler type of heel. Uh, and in the main event of Great American Bash, what a waste that it was on a weekly show. Should have definitely been saved for a pay-per-view this. Keith Lee became a dual champion as he defeated Adam Cole. Lee is now the North American champion and the NXT champion. Uh, I hope they do a tournament for the North American belt. Love myself a little tournament, especially when it's a prestigious one for a decent belt. Smackdown. Smackdown, Smackdown, Smackdown. Honestly, I'm, I'm lo losing the will a little bit with Smackdown. It's such an awful show at the moment, and that, that, that's that gone quite far for me. I've been building it up for weeks, but I've got to say it at the moment. It is not good at all. Kicked off with Jeff Hardy defeating The Miz. Let's have more abuse to Jeff Hardy during this show about his past demons. <sighs> Boring. Uh, Bailey and Sasha defeated Bliss and Cross. Bailey and Sasha picking up loads of wins and loads of matches at the moment. And then out of four matches, the final two both ended in no contests. One of them only just being over a minute long. They had a silly karaoke contest with the women. A uh, good way to reintroduce Naomi. Uh, and then Lacey Evans versus Naomi ended up in a no contest. At least we'll get to see that match again because both women have a lot to offer. And in the main event, which obviously went quite a lot longer, the New Day and Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura ended in a no contest. I get this a little bit more because they're obviously pushing it towards a pay-per-view, maybe SummerSlam. They haven't announced it for Extreme Rules, so maybe SummerSlam. Uh, it would be a good show if they gave them a proper match. It was 13 minutes long, so it was all right, but it was nothing major. SmackDown, you really need to build up your game because it is getting very poor. Okay, AEW Fighter Fest Part 2. Obviously, Brian Cage against John Moxley was pushed to the week after to fight for the Fallen, so they had to put a couple more matches in here. So we kicked off with Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page defending their tag team titles against Private Party. Good match. Uh, Mark Quinn getting a lot of the showcase moves in this one. Page and Omega came out victorious. Uh, looking like there's no problems between them two now. Lance Archer defeated Joey Janela, probably my favourite match of the night, that one. A lot of people will disagree because of the eight-man tag, but that was my favourite match of the night. Joey Janela was made to look, he was treated like a main eventer in that match. He even kicked out of one of Lance Archer's finishing moves. Uh, are they going to build up Joey Janela? Obviously, he's in the tag team division with Sonny Kiss at the moment, but he was properly treated like a main eventer there. I really enjoyed the match. Well done, Archer. Well done, Janela. Uh, Archer came out with the victory. Uh, Butcher, Blade, Phoenix and Pentagon defeated FTR and the Young Bucks. A lot of people will have absolutely loved that match. There was a lot of smashing parts in that match. Lots of really good spots. Ray Phoenix especially. Uh, I liked it, but I thought it, it, it was just a spot match for me. It wasn't a story match. It was just a spot match. So I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have. Uh, Nyla Rose in a wasted match. They could have brought somebody in and had a really good show in, uh, even, even in defeat. But 
but no, they wasted two jobbers on her just so she could win and then announce that she's going to get a manager. Uh, Nyla Rose can talk, so I'm not 100% sure why a manager is needed, but we'll see. And we'll see who it is, so a bit of excitement coming. Dark Order defeated SCU with um, Colt Cabana being allowed to get the pin in the end. Another decent match. Uh, I was I was kind of confused why Stu Grayson was involved in this one because Stu Grayson and Evil Uno are obviously a tag team and there's lots more members of the Dark Order so I, I didn't know why 10 or why 5 or one of the lower members uh, of the Dark Order weren't brought in. Um, they made a great decision because Stu Grayson was the MVP of that match by a mile. He was absolutely brilliant. Again, and this is the second time I've said it, really aided by Jim Ross's commentary. Jim Ross has stepped up his game recently in AEW. Uh, he was a bit lost at the beginning, but he's properly stepped up his game and he's showing the Jim Ross of old, which is great to see. Uh, and in the final match, Chris Jericho defeated Orange Cassidy in a decent match. Um, Jericho built it up to be one of the best matches of his career. It definitely wasn't, but it was a decent enough match. I like Orange Cassidy. He's got a lot about him, but obviously we need to see where, the, where Orange is going to evolve into. Uh, an interesting heel, maybe, Orange Cassidy would make in the future. Okay, uh, the only pay-per-view, proper pay-per-view that we've got coming up is Extreme Rules. They have nicknamed Extreme Rules the Horror Show. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, Drew McIntyre will face Dolph Ziggler for the WWE title. At present time, I haven't seen uh, the stipulation that's been announced by Ziggler. I think it might have been announced, but I've not seen that. Uh, Asuka takes on Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Bailey will take on Nikki Cross, great choice for the horror show, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Braun Strowman will take on Bray Wyatt in a Swamp match. I assume it's going to be the Bray Wyatt from the beginning of the Wyatt family era on NXT. Uh, that'll be a production match, I'm, I'm kind of guessing, considering they've mentioned alligators and things. I can expect a bit of a Jaws moment where the alligators swimming towards one of them, maybe. Uh, it'll be interesting. It won't be my cup of tea, but it'll be a lot of other people's cup of teas. Apollo Crews will take on MVP for the US title. I expect Crews to win, and then expect Crews to face Lashley uh, at the pay-per-view. Jeff Hardy will take on Sheamus in a bar fight. Just don't agree with that storyline at all. And then Seth Rollins will take on Rey Mysterio in an eye for an eye match. And yes, WWE have confirmed there has to be an eye removed to win. That's definitely going to be a production match. I'm guessing one of them is going to have a little bit of time off afterwards. Probably Mysterio, but who knows. Okay, um, the Fantasy Wrestling League stars. The star of the week this week with the most points accumulated per, per worth is Stu Grayson of the Dark Order picking up wins on Dark and uh, AEW Fighter Fest. The star of the month, so over a four-week period, is still Sasha Banks. She's picking up lots of victories at the moment. And the stars of the year in the 12th week of doing this. Drew McIntyre has taken over from Alistair Black as the star of the year for WWE. Cody still leads for AEW. Collector's Corner this week. Quite a fast-moving one this week. Just got some Elites, some Jacks, and something I've not had since I was a child. The Elites I've got this week are Eric Young. Very underrated figure. Hall of Fame, George the Animal Steel. A really nice figure. I love the fact it's got mine with it. A bit of a beaten up box, but for 20 quid I can't complain. A Hall of Fame Macho King figure. Jacks are making a comeback at the moment. So they're getting pricier and pricier, so I thought I'd invest. And I've got the Brain Busters uh, Four Horsemen 2-pack. And the Ric Flair and Barry Windham 2-pack the four horsemen so i just need the de malenko and lex luger one to complete that little set that'll be a goal of mine for the future above me here you will see that i have a hasbro ring here's a picture of it um it's something i've not had since a kid and i'm currently showcasing all my customs from old school customs check them out on facebook fantastic customs for hasbro okay that is the end of this week hope you've enjoyed from W, 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 what a week in wrestling. See you later next week.